Good morning, students. Today, we are diving into a fundamental concept in strength of materials, that is, external forces. This concept forms the backbone of our understanding of how bodies react to forces applied to them and is essential for analyzing structural behavior under various conditions. External forces. As we begin, let's define what a force is. In the simplest terms, forces are a measure of the interaction between two systems. This interaction can have several origins, mechanical, electrical, electromagnetic, chemical, and more. For the purposes of strength of materials, we focus on the mechanical interactions between two bodies. Newton's third law applies here, stating that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means the forces of interaction between two systems are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, and they share the same line of action. Show figure 1.1, aeroplane and earth interaction and spring and weight interaction. Take a look at figure 1.1a, the forces between an airplane and the earth, two systems that are physically separated still interact through the force of gravity. Similarly, in figure 1.1b, the forces between a spring and a weight in contact represent a mechanical interaction. In both cases, we see that the forces F1 and F2 are collinear and satisfy the condition F1 equal menes, F2. System and surroundings. Now, consider any body or system occupying a region R in space. Every other system outside this region forms the surroundings, and these surroundings can interact with our system. When we isolate this system from its surroundings, the action of external systems is represented by a set of forces known as external forces. Show figure 1.2, sketch of isolated system showing external forces. In figure 1.2, we have an isolated system with multiple external forces, F1, F2, and so on, acting on different points of the body. The resulting diagram is referred to as a free body diagram, or simply FBD. Understanding how to draw and analyze a free body diagram is a crucial skill for any engineer because it allows us to visualize all the external forces acting on a system. Types of external forces. External forces can be broadly classified into two types, body forces and surface forces. Body forces are distributed over the entire volume of a body. These forces act on each and every particle within the body and are typically expressed as a force per unit volume. Some common examples include uh, gravitational forces, like the weight of an object, electrostatic forces, inertial forces, forces that arise from the motion of a body, though these are often hypothetical, magnetic forces, surface forces, on the other hand, act through a contact surface at the boundary of the body. These are usually expressed in terms of force per unit area. A few examples include hydrostatic pressure, uh, the pressure exerted by a fluid, frictional forces acting between two bodies in contact, traction forces caused by an electrostatic field. If these surface forces act over a small area, they can be approximated as a concentrated force at a specific point on the surface. However, remember that a truly concentrated force doesn't exist in nature. It is a theoretical concept we use for simplification. Classification of external forces based on time. Another important way to classify external forces is by how they vary with respect to time. We break these down into three categories, static, quasi-static, and dynamic forces. Static loads are forces that do not change in magnitude, direction, or point of application over time. These are the most straightforward forces we will encounter. Quasi-static loads change very slowly, so slowly that the inertial effects can be ignored. In practice, we often assume these loads are static because their rate of change is negligible. Dynamic loads are forces that change rapidly with time, inducing vibrations, fatigue, or other dynamic responses in the material. For example, think about the forces on a car's suspension when it hits a bump, or the oscillating forces on a building during an earthquake. In real-world engineering problems, dynamic loads require complex analysis due to their time-varying nature. However, for most of our study in strength of materials, we will be focusing on static, quasi-static loads, which simplifies our calculations significantly. Conclusion 
In summary, external forces are the driving factors behind all interactions in mechanics. Whether we are dealing with gravitational forces, frictional forces, or pressure, understanding how these forces act on a body and how to represent them using free body diagrams allows us to analyze and solve engineering problems with precision. In the next lecture, we will dive deeper into internal forces and how they relate to the stresses and strains inside materials. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to our next session. Good morning, students. Today we're going to discuss an essential topic in strength of materials, internal forces. Understanding these forces is crucial for analyzing how materials and structures behave under external loads. So let's begin. Internal forces. To start, let's consider the basic nature of a solid. Two fundamental conclusions can be drawn about the forces within a solid. One, there must be forces of attraction between molecules or atoms that resist separation. Two, at the same time, there must be forces of repulsion between them, resisting closer contact. These two types of forces balance each other to maintain the structure of the material. Investigations have shown that these forces of attraction and repulsion between two molecules can be mathematically represented by the equation F equals minus frac ARM plus frac B R square N, where R is the intermolecular spacing and A, B, M, and I N are constants specific to the material. This equation is often depicted graphically as the condon morse curve. Show figure 1.3. Looking at figure 1.33 can, this graph shows how the forces of attraction and repulsion change with intermolecular spacing. The point where the net force is zero corresponds to a state of stable equilibrium, where the molecules are spaced at R score zero. Stable equilibrium and external forces. In a state of stable equilibrium, the molecules are separated by a distance R zero, where the net force is zero. Now, if we apply an external tensile force, Ft, for instance, by stretching the material, this would tend to pull the molecules apart by a small distance, delta R. To resist this, and for attractive force, Fa is generated between the molecules. Similarly, if a compressive force is applied, a repulsive force, Fr, develops. Show figure 1.4, interaction between molecules under tensile and compressive forces. As seen in figure 1.4, the molecules adjust their spacing as forces are applied, and this interaction plays a key role in how materials deform. The attractive force, Fa, resists stretching, while the repulsive force, Fr, resists compression. When the external force reaches a balance point, the molecules come closer by a small distance, delta R, internal forces in a system. This concept of interaction between two molecules can now be extended to any system under the action of external forces. Essentially, a system consists of a large number of molecules that interact with one another to resist the action of external forces. Show figure 1.4, equilibrium between two molecules. Each pair of molecules within the system is in a state of equilibrium. As external forces act on the system, the molecules adjust their positions, which leads to internal forces developing to counteract the external loads. These internal forces are responsible for the deformation that occurs within the material. What are internal forces? Internal forces are the forces that arise between molecules within the material as a result of external loads. They come into play to resist deformation and maintain structural integrity. These forces can exist not only within individual bodies, but also between interacting bodies. Example, system of spheres on an inclined plane. To illustrate this further, let's consider the example of a system consisting of three spheres placed on an inclined plane. This example will help us understand how internal and external forces interact in a more complex system. Show figure 1.5a three spheres placed on an inclined plane. In figure 1.5a, the forces of interaction between the spheres are internal forces that exist between the molecules of all three spheres. The external forces acting on the system include the weights of the spheres, denoted as Wa, Wb, and Wc, as well as the reactions at the point at R1 and R2. 
free body diagram FBD. Now, if we isolate one of the spheres, say sphere A, and focus only on it, uh, we can represent it using a free body diagram. In this diagram, the forces RB and RC, which were internal forces in the original system, and now become external forces acting on sphere A. Show figure 1.5B, free body diagram of sphere A. Here in figure 1.5b, the internal forces that existed between the molecules of sphere A and spheres B and C have become external forces when we isolate sphere A from the system. This is an important concept to grasp because the internal forces within a system can change roles depending on how we define the system's boundaries. Conclusion. To summarize, internal forces play a critical role in resisting deformation within a material. These forces arise due to molecular interactions when external forces are applied. By understanding these internal forces, we can better predict how materials behave under different loads. In the next lecture, we will explore how these internal forces lead to stress and strain within materials, and how we can calculate these properties for various structural applications. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to continuing this discussion in our next session.